We will never change our scriptural position. They will be met with fire and fury. Okay, um, hello YouTube, um, mainly I want to say a hello to the XJW community uh, and those who support us. Um, so I am happy and somewhat excited to be back doing a video. Uh, I am JW Illusion as you know and I have been away from making videos for quite some time now, several months. Um, the reason being is because I'm an XJW who lives life the way we should. Um, I know there are difficulties when it comes to uh, being an XJW and trying to get out there and experience life, but after a while, you uh, begin to experience and learn things and you figure out how to do it. It just takes a little bit of time. So again, you guys mostly know my story. If you don't, take a look at some of my earlier videos. but. I am a proud XJW, disfellowshipped, proudly disfellowshipped, so it's not a big deal to me. Um, left, went back for a little while, and then just left again, and have never returned, and that was in 2005. So, anyway, my reason for doing this video is I'm basically jumping on the bandwagon, along with a lot of other XJWs, to talk about the A&E special that Leah Romini uh, conducted last week with a number of our fellow XJWs who were on the panel. And what a wonderful job that uh, they did. Um, let me start by saying that I'm not saying it's a wonderful job just because they are XJWs like myself. I'm saying they did a wonderful job because they laid this whole program out so succinctly uh, in a very um, linear way, I guess I would say so that people could understand their real life stories and experiences. And there are thousands, perhaps 10,000s of us who have similar stories, if not the same type of stories. Um, we just haven't been heard. So these individuals who were on the panel were individuals who um, had the opportunity to share their stories and help propagate this out into the, into the real world so that people see what the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower, Bible and Tract Society, and more importantly, the governing body, what they are all about. So that's why I'm doing this video. So um, if any of the individuals who were on the panel, I knew two of them. I knew, obviously, uh, Lloyd Evans, a.k.a. John Cedars. I knew him, and then I knew one of the other black guys, XJW Fifth. I've seen his videos, but... I didn't know any of the other ones, but in any case, you know, it's just like I know them. Um, we have all had a similar, familiar experience with Jehovah's Witnesses organization, so I feel like I know them all. But in any case, um, what a wonderful way for them to, to come out, tell their stories, um, to actually even get on uh, Leah Ramini's radar and get on such a national platform in order to put this information out there. Very, very good job. I think Lloyd Evans had quite a bit to do with it. But if any others had something to do with it, you know, writing Leah and, you know, helping get onto the program, I, I thank you for that as well. Um, you guys did an amazing job. Um, the one thing that I would say is, and it's, you know, this is very subjective too, is that they perhaps may have opened themselves up to more um, scrutiny by their family members. Um, and possibly more shunning by their family members. But at this point, who really cares, right, about the shunning thing? Um, if family members want to continue to shun, you know, they're welcome to do that. They're going to do that. There's nothing we can do to stop it. Um, so I'm, you know, if, if their family members saw them and took even more of a hardline stance, so be it. But these individuals were very brave and strong enough to get on national television on this national platform that is well recognized throughout the world, the, you know, Leah Ramini and Scientology. Um, so this platform is well recognized throughout the entire world and they were 
strong enough to get on this and, and tell their stories. So I applaud each and every one of them. What I would hope is that um, they had, there is like a second episode or even a season. Now that would be huge if they did a, a, an entire season about Jehovah's Witnesses. But maybe we could at least do a second episode with uh, perhaps Lloyd Evans kind of as a, as, a, as a panel moderator along with a new batch of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. Myself included, of course. I would love to be there. Um, to hear even more experiences of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. It is a serious and real thing what we have experienced from that organization. I was a born in, so I had no choice in the matter. Um, you know, I had wonderful parents, good people, just misled. They had no clue about what they were involved in. And so I hope my mother at this point in time and my sisters who are still involved in this horrible cultish religion will begin to come see the real truth behind it. I doubt if they do, but I'm just saying it would be nice if they did um, because, you know, we love our families. And for me personally, I, I'm not going to fall apart and break down. And this is in no way bashing people who have a tough time uh, disentangling from their family because it is obviously blood relations are, are serious and blood relations um, you know, when those are torn apart, it causes a lot of emotional damage. Fortunately for me, I was able to, you know, after some, some time, and when I say some time, I'm going to qualify that as about two to three years, I was able to pretty much break the bond, so to speak. Not that I don't love my mother and my sisters um, and my father, but I was able to break the bonds and move on. Um, I delve into education. I went in and got a couple of degrees, learned a specific uh, skill set, and you know, gained a career that has been very promising and fulfilling. So uh, there are a lot of things that uh, XJWs can do to um, kind of, what, do I, what would I say, um, take their mind away from the pain that they're experiencing and focus and channel their energies in other places. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not easy, it is difficult, but it is certainly something that can be done. Um, and then, I, you know, I've seen plenty of XJWs out there saying how they have made new friends who are almost like family. So there's, you know, there's a lot that can be done once you leave this organization. I don't have any regrets. Um, I travel internationally, nationally. I have a, a worldly woman that I married who has been absolutely wonderful. We have children together. Um, we have a great life. So, um, you know, the whole Jehovah's Witness thing, this type of exposure that they have now received on A&E and on this national platform, I think is going to be disastrous for them. Not straight away, but um, over time, maybe the next 10, 15 years is gonna be really kind of crucial perhaps pivotal for the Jehovah's Witnesses. So let me say that again, the next, in my opinion, this is my opinion now, in the next 10 to 15 years, it's gonna be a crucial time point for the Jehovah's Witnesses because now the organization is clearly on the decline. Uh, even before this program came out, uh, so much on YouTube, so much out on the internet, um, so many, you know, cart crashes, Kingdom Hall crashes previously, you know, people starting to see, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses starting to see that there's something wrong within the organization. Otherwise, why would people like us be pressing the issue? We're just trying to help our family members. And if people ultimately want to stay as part of the Jehovah's Witness religion, despite all the information that's out there for them, that's fine too. I guess I would say I could care less. But for the most part, we want to help our families get out of this because we have seen behind the curtain. The curtain has been pulled down. And last week with this a and &E special, the curtain was pulled down even further to where it's just hanging on just a few threads, in my opinion. Just a few freaking threads. Uh, this organization is really, really 
And when I say this organization, the Jehovah's Witnesses is really, really hanging by a thread. So now, without, you know, people, without Jehovah's Witnesses flipping out about this, perhaps some will wonder why and maybe watch the special. I'm sure plenty did. I'm sure plenty did in the privacy of their own homes. But hopefully, as they watched it, they opened their minds up to an objective point of view and not just the watchtower's one-sided point of view of we're always right, those people are apostates, they're bad, they're wrong. The word apostate should be so minimalized in our vocabulary at least because it has no meaning, absolutely. Um, but they still push it because they realize, and when I say they, I'm referring to the governing body, the watchtower, and all of their cronies who help push out policies. They are so afraid of what is going on in the XJW slash apostate community that they have to continue to hammer home and beat down the point about apostates being so bad so that other Jehovah's Witnesses are, you know, and just incredibly afraid to listen to us, to hear us out or anything like that because the governing body and the Watchtower cronies know that once people start getting a peek behind the curtain, so to speak, that they will perhaps begin doubting too. And then you have this whole avalanche of people leaving the Watchtower and now Tony Morris and Garrett Loesch and Stephen Lett and whoever, Mark Sanderson, whoever these other uh, pieces of crap are who are part of the governing body, they don't get their cushy lifestyle. They don't get the power anymore to be over people. The leaders, the so-called self, the self-imposed leaders between the world and Jesus Christ, or really the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses and Jesus Christ. These, these guys are self-imposed. Nobody put them in that position. They put themselves in that position, and they're liars. I mean, why in the world, out of billions upon billions of people, would those seven or eight, I don't know what it is now, guys be chosen to be God's intermediary to all of humankind? I mean, come on. If you look at Stephen Lett or any of them, Tony Morris and any of these idiots who, when they're speaking, they're absolutely horrendous. These people are horrible. Who would even want to listen to them? And now that they have JW Broadcast, it should be noted that they're exposing themselves even more because of the stupidity and the absolute insane stuff that comes out of JW Broadcast. So, you know, I'm glad they actually do those because hopefully people will begin seeing that as well. Like, you know, when you look at Stephen Lett and you hear him, you hear this guy speak, you have to be like almost horrified and mystified as to why someone would take him seriously in any way, shape, or form. The guy is a joke. Listen to Tony Morris. He's an egotistical piece of crap who thinks he knows everything and the way he talks and some of the crap that he says, and I'm using nice words. I don't want to use expletives in this video because my kids may be right outside the door. So anyway, th these guys are a joke. So they see the, you know, the, the, the writing on, handwriting on the wall. Remember that? If you, if you grew up as a Jehovah's Witness like me, and there was, you had the My Book of Bible stories, we had that one story that, you know, had the handwriting on the wall right there. Um, so hopefully these guys are seeing the handwriting on the wall. Like people are on to them. People are on to their crap, their bull crap, and people are exposing them. And, you know, like a few have said uh, in other videos that have been made about the, the A&E program, there's nothing that the Watchtower can do to A&E, uh, Leah Ramini, whoever the other gentleman was who was on there with her uh, as a host. There's nothing that the Watchtower can do to them. The Watchtower is in damage control mode, as I put in one of my earlier, in one of the earlier slides on this video. They haven't figured it out yet, but you can rest assured that they're in damage control mode. They're trying to figure out how to combat this or how to counteract 
what this what happened on the A&E program. How can they counteract that? And now they can't counteract it to you know anyone out in the real world. The only place that they can counteract is within their own little bubble organization. And you can best believe that they're going to have a, a JW broadcast about uh, you know something about apostates and the horrible things that we're doing and all of this type of stuff. So anyway, you know that's just my thought on it. I think the A and E broadcasts with Leah Ramini and uh, the panel of XJWs was wonderful. I really hope that there can be a, a second one at least, perhaps a third that brings in a few more perspectives from XJWs, other experiences that XJWs may have had, just to really, really, you know, stir the pot and show the amount of, um, of just craziness and expose what the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Watchtower did to many of us. But, like I said, we have, some of us have gone on to live wonderful lives and, and real lives about what life is all about, right? So, and I encourage anybody, contact me if you like. Uh, my email is always at the end of these, JW Illusion here. Um, there are so many ways to break free of the organization, to raise yourself up literally um, by your bootstraps, because we have to do that. I mean, we're you come out of the Jehovah's Witness organization, you're way the heck down here. Not saying you're a lowly person, but like you haven't been exposed to anything, especially if you grew up in it like me. You haven't been exposed to what real life is like, and you may have to go through some challenges in order to grow and figure out who you are. But my God, once you get there, it's a wonderful place to be. So um, that's about it. You can see I got my Tough Mudder headband on. I recently ran a Tough Mudder full with some of my buddies from work. Um, so we are living life. We're enjoying life, we're having fun, great experiences, traveling all over the world, all over the country. Um, I don't have to go out in field service on Saturday morning, go to the meeting on Sundays or any other night during the week. I don't have to feel pressured that I'm not doing enough um, knowing that I'm giving my all at the time. It was just such a horrible, horrible feeling and just such a horrible experience. Now, don't get me wrong, perhaps there were some good things about being in the organization. To me, those are few and far in between, but they're, they're there. I'm not completely slamming, you know, the way I grew up, but it certainly isn't the way that I'm raising my children or that I would want to raise my children. So, um, reach out to me if you like. Otherwise, like the video, pass it along to others, um, and let's keep this XJW community thing moving forward. We obviously have quite a bit of momentum, quite a bit of traction. There are a lot of things that we can do. We can, we can write, we can contact people, the media, one another. I think we need to gel a little bit more closely with one another. I think I've, in the time that I've done my videos, I've connected with maybe two people, two XJW. So let's connect, let's learn who we are. Let's not be afraid. You know, learn a little bit about me. I'll learn a little bit about you, where you live, where you work, what you like, where you've traveled. Um, we can continue to build this community. So this is JW Illusion. I'm out. It's a wonderful winter day. It's almost Thanksgiving 2018. Life is great. Life is grand. Um, so I would love to hear from you. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, my videos are sparse because I'm a pretty busy guy. I'm actually sitting here in my daughter's room because this was the only quiet place I could get to. So, um, yeah, that's about it. I hope you all are doing well. I genuinely do. And we will talk soon. Take care. Stop.